Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I made Olmec the Ancient Ice Stag. And this one's a little bit more complex and a little stranger and a bit different from what I normally do. So stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing, as with all of my stags that I make, um, I start off with a resin cast of a original sculpture um, by me. Uh, which I molded in sil silicon and then cast in resin and I then add these um, plastic horns which I get online uh, so they're not made by me uh, they are a lot sturdier than actually sculpting any horns so there's no chance of them snapping or anything like that so I go ahead and attach these horns using some epoxy sculpt and epoxy sculpt is a two-part epoxy um, which you mix together and then you um, attach it to whatever you want. Uh, so I usually wear gloves to mix this and once it's mixed I can um, remove the gloves and put um, the epoxy on what I want to um, put it on. So I leave this to dry overnight before I do anything otherwise it there's a chance it could fall off um, and it dries rock hard so there's no chance of any snapping or anything like that. Once that is dry I'll then move on to painting the horns and I had this idea that I wanted to do these horns in a realistic um, color of the antlers of normal stags so I just went ahead and actually painted up these stag horns using um, some water-based acrylic paint and I painted them up and I hated it <laughs> so it's not what I wanted and the details that I was going to put onto the horns uh, didn't actually uh, stand out they kind of got lost in it so I ended up just repainting over this because I wasn't happy with it but I'll still include it because it gives you a good um, idea of how to paint some uh, horns some deer antlers in a realistic way um, so yeah it's a good way to learn that too. So as with most of the dolls that I sell I have a backstory for them so I'll go ahead and read out the story for Olmec the ancient ice stag. Olmec is a very rare and ancient creature thought to be extinct thousands of years ago. There was one recently discovered living in the Wemkia under the protection of the tribes people there. Their antlers and hooves have ancient writing inscribed on them which glow from white to blue. As these creatures were thought to be extinct, nobody knows what these ancient writing means. Their bodies were also covered in blue markings and their eyes are pupilless. Some say these markings are a key for an ancient artifact or place. Ancient ice stags used to range in the north areas of Cryindia. As they are only one in existence, it resides deep in the caves of Crimea, protected by the tribes people there. So that's the little story of Olmec. Um, and I will have a um, map drawing coming up of uh, Cry India, so you get more of an understanding where it resides. Anyway, moving on to painting the eye area. And as you can see, the horns are still the realistic coloured horns, so I wasn't happy with it. So I was letting it dry and moving on to other things. So I am just going around doing the normal thing and painting around the eyes, nose and mouth area in that black chrome acryl acrylic paint. Uh, and I wanted the area around the eyes to be sort of dark so the pupilless eyes sort of stand out as well. Uh, so I went ahead and did it in black. I originally thought I was going to do it in silver but um, I didn't like how it sort of washed it out and it wasn't, um, it didn't make the eyes stand out so I decided against the silver. And just like normal, when I paint anything onto resin, I also prime it first so the paint actually adheres to the resin piece because resin is quite slippery and when you just put paint on, sometimes it just comes off. All right, so right now I was going to test out how I wanted that ancient writing to look on the horns. Uh, so I used some paint that I was originally going to use, but I didn't like the way that turned out either. So um, you can see how the writing sort of... Um, washes out and gets lost in the texture of the antlers so I wasn't really happy with the way that looked and also this ancient writing isn't anything in particular it's just something that I made up in my head uh, using symbols and um, uh, signs and different letters upside down and stuff like that so at th this point I ended up hating it and I uh, went ahead and painted over it in just a plain black <laughs> so essentially I could have just 
use some black antlers that I have, but um, there you go. This is what happens when you make things and then you're unhappy with it and then you just end up starting again, basically. But, you know, you have to do these things when you, you're you not happy with it and it's just not going to sit right with you if you just let it go as well. So um, if you have an intuition or anything, just always go with your intuition or go with what your creativity wants. So at the end of the day, I wanted these antlers to be solid black. So that's what I did. No big deal. I just means I lost a few hours of painting and that's that's fine. So I'm using a different paint this time rather than that chrome acryl paint. This is a paint from Dervy and Matisse in I think it was called Mars Black. And it has a slightly brownier tone than um, the normal black paint that I use. And I like that brownier tone for the black as well because it's not just like a jet black. It's more of a um, animalistic type colour. So that's what I really like about this paint. So once that paint is all dried, I'm going to go ahead and redo that ancient writing. So this time I'm using some paints by Jacquard and I'm just using a blue colour and I'm also using a uh, white shimmery colour as well. So I essentially wanted the ancient writing to be sort of replicate a glowing um, running light up the antlers so it glows from uh, blue to white, uh, the white being at the tip of the antlers uh, and the blue closer to the base of the head. Uh, so this took quite a number of hours to actually do this ancient writing and the white paint that I used made it quite difficult because it had a lot of shimmer in it and the shimmer just ended up clumping uh, along you know in within a few minutes of using it but you know you just wash your brush clean and continue on so this is what we have at the end of it uh, it took quite a long time like i said but i really like the effect of it and um yeah really happy i went with the black antlers as well So I did the same deal with the hooves. So the hooves are also a resin cast of a sculpture that I've done. And it has that ball and socket armature inside as well, making the posability a bit sturdier. So I'm gonna go ahead in that Dervy and Matisse black paint, if that's the brownie tone paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of the hooves that same color and I'll leave it to dry. When we come back, I can do some writing on those hooves. So same deal as the antlers, although I wanted the blue at the bottom of the hooves and to uh, fade into the white up to the top. Um, a lot of this hoof is going to be covered in um, that faux fur anyway, but it's always good to do it fully so anything that is showing you can actually see any details that you've pa uh, painted on beforehand. And I'd really like to do more creatures like this that have um, ancient writing and um, markings and stuff like that on their bodies. Uh, I've done sort of tribally ones, which I also want to do more of, but I really like this ancient marking and I like where this is going. So um, I might, you know, elaborate on the ancient relics and stuff like that in the future. So let me know if you're interested in that down in the comments and I'll um, try and explore that as well. All right, moving on to the fur and I'm going to be using this slightly grey-ish fur. It's got a little bit of a blue tone to it. It's a medium pile faux fur and it's really really good quality. Uh, it's the perfect um, length and pile and it's just, everything's perfect about this fur. I really like working with it. So as you can see I've drawn out my patterns so I'm going to go and cut it all out um, using a small pair of sharp scissors. I find that's best to use in uh, cutting faux fur rather than um, using a blade or anything. Small pair of, of sharp scissors is the best thing you can use. So I'm going to cut it all out, uh, pin it together and sew it up on a sewing machine. And this is what we have after I've sewn it up on the sewing machine. So I leave the leg ends open and I also leave the back end open. So I can easily turn that uh, piece of fur inside out or the right way around rather. And I'd recommend using a sewing machine and um, to sew up any of your bodies just because it's a lot stronger than actually hand sewing everything. And it's also a lot quicker too, so a lot more time effective uh, if you're strapped for time like I am. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this body the right way around. You can see the, the neck area is quite small, so it'll take some uh, pushing and pulling to get it through, but this is what we have once it's been turned the right way around. And it just looks like a fluffy mess at the moment, but it will end up looking like a deer, I promise you. Um, but after I've done this, I will go ahead and insert that uh, ball and socket armature inside the body and uh, the resin pieces are already attached so I done that while I was casting and uh, it's pretty pretty simple it's a lot quicker than actually using wire armature to just pop the ball and sockets armatures together and I do plan on making a video of how the ball and socket armature the posability of it so uh, I just need to find time to do it so hopefully I can do it with this particular doll because I have it sitting right next to me and um, hopefully have some time to shoot it so once that's all been uh, put in, I'm going to go ahead and sew up the body using a ladder stitch. So I do plan on making a ladder stitch video as well, just uh, for it is specific to um, faux furs rather than you know, uh, other tutorials that are using felt and stuff like that. So I wanted to show one that is specific to faux fur. So I will get on that. I just, again, need to find the time to actually make that. But you can kind of get the idea here that it's basically going back and forth um, from uh, one side of the fur to the other and making sure your stitch is tight. Alright, so once that is all sewn up, I'll go ahead and attach that faux fur piece to the resin using the tacky fabric glue that I attach everything with. Uh, again, it's from a store here in Australia called Spotlight, but you can find it at, you know, most craft stores in your area. They should have some form of tacky fabric glue. Uh, it's just fabric glue, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. So I'll let that sit for overnight to make sure it's all adhered properly and uh, nothing is falling off. So here's what the face looks like without any faux fur on it. So this is ready to be furred um, and I'll come back and show you what it's like when uh, fur has been applied and uh, it's been trimmed and everything and with no shading as well. So you can get a better idea of the steps that are involved in furring things. All right, so this is what uh, most of my dolls look like once the fur has been applied. As you can see, it's a little bit washed out and uh, there's a lot of not, uh, not a lot of detail on the face and all of the curves and stuff are missing as well. So that's when the shading comes into play. Uh, I'll go ahead and um, shade in all of the areas that need to be shaded in and go ahead and fill in any of the areas that I've missed in the furring process. Now I'm going to be adding some markings using a stained by a Sharpie uh, fabric marker and you can't get these here in Australia anymore. You can probably get them online but I don't know why they've taken them out of shops. I just can't find them anywhere here. So uh, I'm going to have to say goodbye to these textures unfortunately which I find them very very useful. But again can't find them here in Australia for some reason and I can't be bothered buying things online. Uh, especially from America, the shipping is just way too expensive and just totally not worth it. So unfortunately, I can't find these anymore, like I said, which is a real shame. Anyway, so I'm just sort of um, freestyling a little bit here with the markings and um, just going with what I feel looks right. Uh, so I had no particular pattern, no particular um, thing in my head, uh, just went with what my arm did uh, no plan whatsoever and sometimes I think that's the best way to get um, some unique looking creatures so Olmec if it hasn't already been adopted it will be available on my online store at creaturesofnat.com and also have a few little critters looking for homes in there as well and that is it for me today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any requests you can leave it in the comments down below you can also check me out on instagram and facebook at creatures of net and i'll catch you in the next one bye